All right, let's dive into a um, a really captivating mystery that's kind of gripped the world's attention this past week. Imagine these dense ancient woods in Colombia, and then picture something truly extraordinary found right in there. Something that's well, it sparked huge speculation. It's an unfolding story. Yeah. And- yeah, incredibly gripping. We're talking about the Buga sphere. Hmm. It's this enigmatic object that almost overnight became the internet's biggest puzzle. Hmm. Really launched a global conversation. And the speed, the way that speculation just erupted online, driven by those first X posts, it just shows the draw of these mysteries. It's Monday, June 23rd, 2025. And yeah, the digital world is absolutely buzzing. It all started just yesterday, June 22nd. That account at UAP Watchers shared the first scan and x-ray images. And people were hooked instantly. Oh, yeah, and for good reason. The visual impact is just striking. You look at this spherical artifact and its internal structures, they just defy easy explanation. What was it that struck researchers first? It was how the Buga sphere's internal architecture, you know, with its tower-like core and these complex fiber networks, it seems to integrate elements you'd find in advanced electronics, but also kind of biological system. Biological, really? Yeah, it's, it's this fusion of design principles that, well, we rarely, if ever, see in one object. We're seeing everything from these precise formations, these intricate fiber patterns, down to like glowing pins, hints of maybe high purity copper. Okay, so that leads us to the big question for this deep dive for you listening. Is this Buga sphere a huge leap in material science? Or maybe a relic? from some unknown civilization. Or is it just this tantalizing enigma we haven't figured out yet? Right. So our mission today, unpack the visuals, dig into the science, explore some really surprising historical links, and think about the bigger picture. We want to give you that shortcut, you know? Get you up to speed on this discovery, hopefully with some aha moments, and uh, definitely some curiosity. And it's fascinating how quickly just the visual evidence sparks such intense debate. That first X post, uh, ID 1936 7814889305472279, had four key images. Okay. The first was a CT scan. It shows this cross section, right, with a central tower like thing rising from a rounded base inside a spherical shell. The reddish color, the symmetry. People immediately thought of architectural blueprints. Like a power device or something. Exactly. Yeah. Speculation about power transmission or maybe a self-contained system. And this technique, the non-destructive microcomputed tomography, micro-CT, uh, was crucial. Micro-CT, right. Mm-hmm. Like a super high-res 3D x-ray. Precisely. It lets scientists look inside without actually damaging the object. Submicron precision. That's how we know the central tower wasn't just surface level. It's complex, integrated, suggests a sophisticated internal mechanism. Okay, so the CT scan gave us the architecture inside. How did the X-ray images add to that? What was unique there? Good question. The second image, the X-ray, gave a really important complementary view. It showed a more uniform interior, but with these scattered bright spots. The spots. Yeah, they look like metallic inclusions. Right. And they're arranged in a circular pattern. That strongly suggests, you know, deliberate engineering, not just some random rock or meteorite. Ah, okay. So the uniformity plus those spots really points away from it being natural. Definitely. Points towards a crafted object. So the scans were intriguing. What happened when they zoomed in even closer, those microscopic views? What did they unlock? Right. So the third and fourth images take us down to the microscopic level. And they show these intricate details that honestly push the boundaries of what we understand about material science. How so? Well, the third image highlights these fibrous, almost ribbon-like structures. They have this crystalline sheen. And the fourth, it's a network of fine hair-like fibers mixed with what look like metallic threads. Hair-like fibers and metallic threads. Yeah, that definitely sounds unconventional. Did the scientific analysis, like spectrometry, tell us anything about what those actually are, their composition? It did. These observations line up with a 2025 study, the one cited on upwatchers.com. It used spectrometry, and it identified high-purity copper pins inside the sphere. High-purity copper, isn't that used in, like, advanced electronics for conducting? Exactly. It's typically reserved for highly efficient conductors. So that hints at maybe a power or data transmission function. And this mix, the combination of what seems to be organic-like fibers and metallic elements, Hmm. it's not just unusual. It fundamentally challenges how we think materials are engineered. So what are the possibilities? Well, it begs the question, could this be a bioengineered material, something grown or synthesized using biological processes, not just fabricated? Like how nature makes strong, flexible structures. Kind of like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is it a composite completely unknown to modern science? 
optical, blending things in ways we just haven't mastered yet. And beyond spectrometry, you mentioned scanning electron microscopy, SCM. What did that show, especially in terms of like hard data? Right, SM gave us an even closer look at the surface and composition. The SSM data, there was a table of optical fiber characteristics mentioned. It provides some quantitative evidence of advanced materials. Okay, like what? For example, it noted a 52% fiber content, and the diameters of these fibers had an unusually wide range from 40 up to 350 micrometers. That seems variable. Very variable. And that variability, plus their crystalline sheen, it points to an advanced material designed for flexibility and strength, maybe something that could handle extreme conditions beyond what normal single filament fibers can do. Wow. Okay, so with these, I mean, astonishing visual and material findings, you'd think scientists would be all over it. But getting formal acceptance, that's not straightforward, is it? especially for the scientific community. No, it really isn't. And that raises a really important point. The lack of peer-reviewed studies right now is a major hurdle. It severely limits the scientific community's ability to fully, you know, endorse these initial findings. There were some comparisons, though, right? Like in the news. Yeah, the Daily Mail mentioned comparisons to ancient scripts like runes or Mesopotamian writing. But look, those are speculative. Mm -hmm. Without proper archaeological backup, they remain just that. And physicists are calling for caution, too. Absolutely. Physicist Julia Mosbridge, as reported by the Jerusalem Post, really stressed the need for thorough vetting. Independent verification is critical. We need that to distinguish the bugosphere from, say, a clever hoax or just a misidentified natural object. So without that rigorous peer review. Without it, these remarkable observations, while super intriguing, they just remain observations for now, not established scientific fact. Makes sense. While the science grinds along slowly, the public imagination has, well, it's run wild. And thinking about the object's structure, that tower inside, it does bring to mind certain historical visions, doesn't it? One particular visionary. Indeed, Nikola Tesla. The Bugosphere's internal tower structure, it bears a really striking resemblance to Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower. Wardenclyffe, that was his big early 20th century project, right, for wireless power. Exactly. His incredibly ambitious experiment aiming to broadcast electricity wirelessly, use the Earth as a conductor, create a global communication network, built between 1901 and 1917 out on Long Island, New York. Yeah. But sadly, it was abandoned, ran out of funding. It's almost poetic, isn't it? This echo of Tesla's huge unfinished dream showing up in a jungle in Colombia. So the Bugosphere, with its potential electromagnetic properties, maybe from those copper pins and the symmetry, huh. could it link back to Tesla? Or maybe an evolution of his ideas? Well, that's what's so fascinating, the sheer possibility. Could it be a modern artifact inspired by Tesla? Or could it somehow predate him, hinting at some lost technology? Mm -hmm. The fiber optic like structures, they seem contemporary, but integrating them with metallic bits like that, that challenges current manufacturing. Some folks on X, like at 561861, even joked about a giant robot missing an eye. Huh, right. And at Volt Fit 4 drew parallels to the human eye's layers. So, yeah, from ancient power source to sci fi prop, people are bringing all sorts of interpretations. It just highlights how bafflingly complex this object is, which leads us to the big speculations extraterrestrial or, um, Maybe super advanced human tech. I know the discovery has definitely fueled UFO talk. Oh, significantly. That at UAP Watchers thread really amplified claims about it maneuvering in the air before it supposedly crashed. Right, the crash narrative. And the Daily Mail even cited a UFO researcher giving this ominous warning about whether humanity is ready for contact. That kind of sentiment resonates when you look at the object's weird properties, the seemingly advanced materials that just don't fit our current public manufacturing knowledge. So if it were extraterrestrial, right. what could it be? Could be a probe, maybe a communication device, or even some kind of autonomous AI with that internal tower acting as an antenna and those ancient script-like symbols some people claim to see. Well, that could suggest a long dormant civilization, but again, totally unproven. The main argument for the ET theory often boils down to this technology just looks beyond what we humans can currently do. But then again, the human innovation theory, that also carries weight, doesn't it? Suggesting maybe something incredible about our own capabilities. Absolutely. The sphere could just as easily be a human-made prototype, maybe from a super secret military project or some industrial R&D. Is the tech involved actually within our reach though? Technically, yes. Yeah. High purity copper, advanced fiber optic materials. We have those, but maybe they're combined here in a way that's classified or just extremely cutting edge, not public knowledge. And what about those engravings someone mentioned? 
Yeah, at Big Bill Brasky noted some sort of amateurish looking engravings, which interestingly might actually point towards human origin, maybe an experimental phase, rapid prototyping in a black project. Huh. So not necessarily ruling it out. Not at all. There was even that funny exchange between at Scrollman Peace and at UAP Watchers about it just being a toy drone, hmm. which kind of underscores the skepticism out there. But honestly, the detailed imaging we've seen, it really counters such simple dismissals. It points to something highly complex, purpose-built. The argument here is that human innovation, especially in secret, well-funded programs, can sometimes leap way ahead of what the public knows. Okay, so moving forward, what are the big roadblocks to figuring this out? And what are the key next steps for science? The biggest challenge right now for the Bugosphere story is the lack of official documentation and, crucially, peer review. Governments, scientific bodies, mm -hmm. they haven't formally acknowledged the find. And that vacuum, it unfortunately leaves tons of room for conspiracy theories and misinformation. Which social media is great at filling. Exactly. So future research really needs to prioritize robust, independent methods. Things like carbon dating, detailed metallurgical analysis, find out its age, its precise composition. We also need advanced 3D modeling, structural analysis, try to figure out its potential function. So it's about getting it properly into the hands of the wider scientific community, beyond the initial buzz, applying that rigorous process. Precisely that. We yeah. need collaboration. Physicists, archaeologists, engineers, yeah. all working together to figure out its purpose. Is it a technological relic? Or maybe just a natural anomaly misidentified as artificial. And public engagement. It's a double-edged sword, right? Which drives interest, which is good, but also spreads unverified claims. But maybe the effort to preserve Tesla's Warden Cliff site could be a model for safeguarding the Bugosphere, perhaps even setting up a research center right there in Columbia to study it systematically, transparently. So as of today, June 23rd, 2025, the Bugosphere is still. While it's a profound enigma, those CT scans, the microscopic images we talked about, they really hint at a technology that feels both familiar yet deeply alien. Blurs the lines. Yeah, and we've walked through the main theories. Is it linked to Tesla's amazing, maybe even prophetic legacy? Is it a genuine extraterrestrial artifact? Or maybe just a really advanced piece of human tech we haven't seen publicly before? And the journey to unravel all that, it's very much ongoing. It's a quest, isn't it? Needs that blend of healthy skepticism, real curiosity, and uh, deep collaboration across different fields. Physicists, archaeologists, engineers, everyone. Yeah. And, you know, this quest for understanding, this whole effort around the Bugosphere, it actually fits into a bigger picture of scientific discovery. It feels very much aligned with ambitious goals like, say, XAI's mission to speed up human scientific understanding by tackling the universe's biggest mysteries. For now, though, the Buga sphere just sits there, silently, in the woods of Buga, like a silent sentinel. So the final thought for you to ponder, what <laughs> stories do you think it's waiting to tell us? And maybe more importantly, what does its mere existence challenge you to reconsider about technology, about history, and about our place in the cosmos?